homeostasis and what do you think you know about homeostasis? I'm spelling it out to the participant section. So what's homeostasis, everyone? I'm waiting. Please, you can reply me via that or you can talk if you wish to. It regulates the stuff and the stuff. Yes, regulation. Yes, I'm with you all. It regulates the yes. stuff in body. Okay, regulation of what of the body? Uh, uh, we take that that way. If I heard you clearly, if I heard you clearly, the regulation of the body. Sorry, okay, I can't. I can't go in via the chat section. I don't know why. I can't. I can't see everyone's chat. Okay, but no problem. Maintaining problem. a steady internal environment. Environment, yes. So, yes, maintaining a steady internal. That was from uh, brother Seriki, or sister Seriki, Umu, and yes, thank you very much. Um, we are all right. Now, Mr. Is, is talking about the regulation of the internal environment of living organisms. Now, why do we have to regulate the internal environment of living organisms? There are a lot of factors that actually determine this. I hope I'm audible enough, everyone. I hope you, you all can hear me. Yes, sir. That, sir. Very good. Very yes, good. Okay. I will, I will amplify my voice. So why must we maintain a steady environment? You see, everybody wants to enjoy. We want to take in Coke. We want to take in Fanta. When you're not feeling fine, you want to take in injections and everything. But yet, where these things are going into is in the, into the body system. And for that reason, the body system has to be able to blend with what is coming in and what it has to give to the outside world. That's why the internal environment of the body has to be regulated. Yes, you see, when this COVID-19 or this pandemic came up, even before now, when you go to the hospital, they will tell you, you want to check your vitals. Why? Why are they checking vitals? Those vitals are for some certain and important organs in the body. When anything is wrong with them, we are able to know that, ah, the internal environment of the body has been distorted. It is no longer regulated. For that reason, you want to check your vitals. And what are those vitals they check? They check your body temperature, your respiratory rate, your blood pressure, and your what? And your pulse rate. For all these, there are factors. When we have a pulse rate that is very fast, it signifies something. When we have a pulse rate that is very low, it signifies something. When the body temperature is very hot, it signifies something. And when it is also very cold, or sorry, it is reduced, the body temperature is going away from the normal, or deviating from the normal, which we know that the normal body temperature of every human is going from 36.9 to 37.2 or 37.3. Once it deviates, we know that, okay, there is a distortion in the what, in the normal what, um, temperature of the body. So that is why we have to study homeostasis. That is regulation of the internal environment now of living organisms. Now, aside from that, there are majorly two organisms we always look into. So we are we're talking about majorly two organisms. We have the poikilothermic organisms. Poikilothermic organisms. I will spell it out. And the other one is homoiothermic organisms. Thermic organisms. So what are the poikilothermic organisms? They are organisms with what? Variable what? Variable body temperature. Their body temperature varies every time. It varies. Example is your lizard. Example is your lizard. Your lizard, for example. You see, have you ever wondered? Have you seen a lizard running very early during the day? It's not possible. Like during that subway time or so. You cannot see a lizard running that time. When you see the lizard, when they are very active, is what? During the day. When the sun is what? Is out. Or in the afternoon, that is what you see there. Why? Because they are poikilothermic organisms. Their body temperature varies with the temperature of the environment. So we call them cold blooded organisms. So the first one is called cold blooded organisms, poikilothermic organisms. Cold blooded organisms. Cold blooded organisms. Why the second one, homeothermic? We call them what? Warm blooded organisms. So we, we are warm blooded. All mammals are warm blooded. Yes. And what happens is just that we maintain our body temperature. Even when the temperature of the environment varies. Please, do you understand me? Hope it's not Sandy as I'm speaking in German or Spanish. Yes, Hello. Sir. Very good. Hope you all understand. So, yes, one blooded organisms, homoeothermic organisms, cold blooded organisms, poikilothermic organisms. So, their body temperature, okay, I think, their body temperature mm -hmm. 
Yeah, for cryotemic, the average temperature of the use with the temperature of the environment. Why for monotemic organisms, the average temperature is only steady and stable over time. It does not vary, it does not change. Do you understand? You see within that period or that range of what 36.9 to 37.2. Now let's go. So homeostasis is a process by which substances within the living organisms are kept constant to prevent certain physiological disorders. When we mean physiological disorders, that is what functional disorder. Just like what I've said, somebody that is with a high pulse rate, what, what do you think will happen to the person? Functionally, the person is not stable. Same thing with the body temperature. If it is too high, you see people telling you that he has fever. And that signifies or is a what a notable sign for infection in the clinic. Once somebody has fever, you know that okay, this person has been infected. And when that occurs, what happens? Functionally, the person is not stable. And that's why we need the stability for living organisms. So they are usually four structures associated with homeostasis. Normally, we have four structures with them that are associated with homeostasis. Number one is the skin. Please let's put it down. The skin. Yes, your skin, which is the last, largest what? Largest what? Organ in the body. You understand? Sir, louder. Okay, louder. I will amplify. I said number one of those structures that are associated with homeostasis. Number one is the skin. The skin. Is the largest organ in the body. Largest organ in the body. Number two is now the endocrine glands. If you don't call it the endocrine glands, we call them the homos or the ductless glands. I will spell it out. The endocrine glands, also known as the homos or the endocrine glands. The endocrine glands, endocrine glands, or, 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 or ductless ductless glands or hormones or hormones. Then number three, we have the liver. Number four, we have the kidney. Are we there now? The skin, the endocrine glands, the liver, the kidney. But something funny happens or happened according to um, Sarolignam or Sarolingam. That's um, the man who wrote modern biology. He included, he said there are five, there are not four. He included the brain. But when he included the brain, the truth of the matter is, why he included the brain is just that all these structures that we've made mention of, or we've thought, or we've talked about, the brain is like what regulates everything. But please take notes. Be it for WAEC or JAM standard, never write brain among them. Once you see the options, the options you're always looking for is what? The skin, the liver, the endocrine glands, and the kidney. So now, number one, I'll be starting with the liver. Please permit me. Why well, I'm not um, touching the, kid, um, the skin first is we will still talk about it on um, sense organs, inshallah, Rahman. So and I think after this topic, I should take sense organs. So we'll talk about it on um, sense organs. So majorly, we treat the skin and we doctor it well. We treat the skin well when they get to what sense organs, inshallah, Rahman. So I will say something little about it, Shah, but it may not be now. Yes, it may be in the next class because I want to quickly finish the other ones. The liver, the kidney, the endocrine glass. So let me start with the liver. So the liver is very important. Is there are two vital organs or gland, um, organs in the body that we don't joke with. Yes, because the function or what the cardiac in the body is always very what is always very powerful. Like their function is something we cannot just. Sorry, please. Uh, my network went off. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Please. So I'm asking a question. I said the liver is the largest 
second um, is the second largest organ, sorry, in the body. So I'm saying, what is the largest organ in mammals? Please, let's type our answers. I'm sorry, I was locked out. So what is the largest organ in mammals, everyone? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. See, um, Sister Umani, Sister Afso, Sister Peculiar, Brother Techno Spark 2, Brother Yakub, Sister Azima, Sister Abiono, Brother Abubaka, Brother Hawal. I'm waiting. Um, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for everyone. Oh, yeah. What is the largest organ in my mouse? I hope you can all hear me. Very good. Very good. From Sister Favor, she said the skin. Yes, I'm Brother Yakub, the skin. I love that. You guys are following. I'm very happy. Yes. Peculiar, yes. I'm very, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. So the liver is the second largest organ in the body. Now, and it's not to perform the following functions. Now let's pay attention to the following functions of what the liver does. Number one, glucose regulation. Yes, it regulates glucose regulation. That's why for those that have issues with their liver or the pancreas, they are diagnosed with what? Diabetes too. Yes, diabetes mellitus. Yes, so because what? There will be inability of the liver to regulate the glucose. So, and you see people, they tell you, ah, oh man, the sugar is because it takes a lot of sugar. That's why you have diabetes. But according to medicine and what we've learned over time, it is the like, it is wrong. When somebody has diabetes too, that shows that the liver has issues or there are some things that are wrong with the liver. Do you understand? So whether the person takes sugar or doesn't take too much. Although sugar can be a predisposing factor. That's what we call it. But yet, it does not necessarily say that that person will have diabetes. But once the liver has issues or the pancreas has issues, it becomes a problem. Number two is carbohydrate and protein metabolism. Yes, they both occur in the liver. Yes, they both occur in the liver. Please take note. So you see after protein is being broken down, there's something we call... Um, hey, hey. I just thing has skipped my mind though. There's something we call... Um, Deamination, yes. Yes, it occurs in the liver. Deamination. I'm sorry, please. Eh? It's, been, it's been a while, so I forgot it. Deamination. It means conversion of excess, conversion of excess, of excess amino acids into urea. It happens in the liver. So it's a part of what? Protein metabolism. Please take note. Carbohydrate metabolism also occurs in the liver. So, but... We won't be talking about that for a level. Now, we have stories of fat-soluble vitamins. Very good. Stories of fat-soluble vitamins. Your fat-soluble vitamins are being stored in the liver. Now, the question comes in, what are your fat-soluble vitamins? Everybody start typing. Sharp, sharp, before I type out the question. What are the fat-soluble vitamins that you know? Just write anything. You know, soluble vitamins. You know, I won't flog you. Eh, and I'm not calling police here. Eh? There's no king. Vitamin A, yes, from Sister Fever, I love that. Oh, yeah, next. Next, so I'll be giving me, just be giving me like that. Right, I mean, hey, the next person call, who is typing? Who is typing? I'm waiting. Yes, we have vitamin A from Sister Favor. I love that. Next, I'll give you just 15 seconds. 15 seconds to give me the password. Right, how many are there? Yes, very good. D, K, I love that. Next person, yes. Vitamin K, very good. So they are called what? The fat soluble vitamins. We call them ADEC. Vitamin A, D, E, K, ADEC, the fat soluble vitamins, they are called ADEC. We have vitamin A. So now let's start again. Another name for vitamin A is called what, class? Another name for vitamin A is called what? It's called what? It's called retinol. It's called retinol. Retinol. Another name for vitamin D is called what? Vitamin D. Vitamin D is called what? It's called what? It's called calciferol. Calciferol for your strong bones and all. And then for vitamin E, it's called what? Class. Vitamin E, it's called what? Ergosterol or tocopherol. Ergosterol or what? Tocopherol. Tocopherol. Then the next one, we have vitamin K, which is what? Necessary for your blood clotting. Vitamin K. You see some people, they call themselves vitamin K. I don't know, maybe their name is Kabiro. Kuburo. They say vitamin K. Vitamin K. Well, I don't know what led those sisters to that. So vitamin K is called what? Phyloquinone, phyloquinone, phyloquinone. Yes, it's necessary for your blood clotting. So please take note of those names. Vitamin A, retinol. Vitamin D, calciferol. Vitamin E, ergosterol, autoferol. I'm spe I've, I've sent it already, but I have to check the search, um, chat section. You see everything. Vitamin E is called tocopherol or ergosterol, yes, which is necessary for what? To prevent marasmic, 
Marasmus. Marasmus. Yes. And vitamin K is phylicinol. Now let's go. Storage of iron. Yes, iron too is stored in the liver. Please take note. After iron, then we have the amnesia. Yes, what I've said earlier. Around the lies even here. So the amnesia that is protein or excess amino acid into urea and keto acid. Into urea and keto acid. Conversion of that occurs in the liver. Then after that, we have detoxification. Please take note. Some people that take all those other drugs like codeine, mixing it with um, synapse and all. The, the detoxification process occurs in the liver. That's the detoxification. It will occur in the liver. But over time, when you place your liver on a lot of work and a lot of stress over time, that is what makes the liver to fail. So all these things are things we need to warn people about. You don't need to be a doctor before you do some little, little things about the body. Do we understand? So all those other drugs they take, actually predispose the liver to a lot of work. And over time, you used to think about it. Somebody is always stressing a lot. What happens? The person will later worn out or wear out. So that is what happens to the liver later on. That's why I have to be very careful. So detoxification also occurs in the liver. That is conversion of harmful materials into harmless ones. But over time, what happens? When you predispose your liver to this, it becomes a problem. Then the next one, we have metabolism of fats. There's breakdown of fats. Why? Because you should even take note that it is the liver itself that produces your bile. Yes, the liver produces 50 mils of bile every day. Then the bile is now being transported to the gallbladder where it is being stored. Take note, it's not the gallbladder that produces the bile. The liver produces the bile. And then it's what? It's being transported to the gallbladder where it's being stored. It produces 15 mils of bile every day. The next one is now storage of glycogen. Yes, glycogen is also stored in the liver. Please take note. We store glycogen also in the liver. Glycogen is also stored in the liver. Yes, glycogen is also known as um, animal, animal starch. Yes, because in plants, glucose is stored as starch, but in animals, glucose is stored as what? Glycogen. Then we have destruction of matured erythrocytes. What are erythrocytes, class? Very good. We've done that here. What are erythrocytes? Erythrocytes. And when do they get, uh, when do they get destroyed? When, and when do they get destroyed? So now you can see biology is intertwined. They get destroyed. So we have destruction of what? Matured erythro erythrocytes. So I'm asking the question. We have the chat section. I'm waiting. 15 seconds. Everybody, fastest finger. Fastest finger. Oh, sharp, sharp. What are the erythrocytes? I've, done, I've said that in this class. And when do they get destroyed in your body? Sharp, sharp. I'm waiting 15 seconds. 15 seconds. So I'm counting now. Yes, red blood cell. Yes, yes. Sister Viva is in the, she's in the realm. She's in the mood. I love that. Red blood cells. And when do they get destroyed? When do they get destroyed? I've said that in this class. When do your red blood cells get destroyed? Yes, they are destroyed in the spleen. Yes, not only in the spleen. Spleen and liver too. Spleen and liver. And liver. And liver. And they are destroyed when? They are destroyed every three, three months. We call those clear cells, they are phagocytic in nature. They are called the coffer cells of the liver. That is where the destruction occurs. The coffer cells. K-U-P-F-F-E-R, the copper cells of the liver, lying very close to this thing, um, hepatic portavin. Yes, but it's, it's not for your level. Let's just leave that. Now, except for that, please take note. Also, the liver also helps in the manufacture of, um, of red blood cells for the fetus. Take note. You know, I said the red blood cells and white blood cells, they are produced where in the bone marrow. That is for an adult. Do you understand? But if for a fetus, a baby that is just coming up or growing in the womb, what produces the what? The red blood cell is the liver. Please don't forget. Please don't ever forget this. What produces the red blood cell is the liver. For a fetus. For a fetus. What produces the red blood cell is the liver. Am I communicating, class? Class, am I communicating? I yes, cannot sir. hear anybody. Are you sure? Yes, are we sure? But the iPhone, you are just coming. But the iPhone. Eh? Since you are just coming, okay. Hope you are sure that I'm communicating. So now let's continue. Now let me quickly talk about the mechanism of glucose regulation by the liver. Mechanism of glucose regulation by the liver. So, uh, mechanism under the mechanism of glucose regulation by the liver. Take note majorly. Um, there are some cells in the liver. We call them the isolates of Langhans. Isolate, I'll spell it of Langans in the liver. Langans. It produces 
has insulin and glucagon. But before that, please. Under the medical regulation, uh, under the mechanism of regulation, under the mechanism of regulation of glucose by the liver is always from the glands majorly, the endocrine glands in the pancreas. Are you getting that? Because the pancreas and the liver, they are very related. So that's why when you see somebody that calls himself a pathologist, you cannot just study the liver alone. He studies the liver, the pancreas, and the biliary tree. That's the track through which bile flows. So the two are related, very related. So in the pancreas, you have the exocrine gland, exocrine gland, and the endocrine gland, and the endocrine gland. So the exocrine gland, whenever I hear exocrine, it simply means digestion, like a gland that carries out the function for digestion. Whenever I hear endocrine gland, it simply means a gland that is kind of um, hormones generally, please, for your level. Let me just explain that way. Exocrine means that the function is for what? Digestion. Endocrine means its function is to produce what? Hormones. So the, the pancreas does that. It is exocrine and endocrine in nature. Although for some higher levels, you see here some other ones, there's still paracrine, there's merocrine. But please, that one is not for your level at all. I don't think there's even any textbook. I said maybe you take your advanced biology textbooks for uh, uh, merocrine and paracrine. Now, exocrine gland. The function of the pancreas there, you know, I said exocrine means for what? Digestion. So the function of the pa uh, pancreas under exocrine, under exocrine gland, is to produce three what? Three digestive enzymes. Three digestive enzymes. We have the lipase, coma, amylase, and the what? And the what? Trypsinogen. Please take note, it's trypsinogen. Although in some we see trypsin. It's not so, it is trypsinogen. But later on, there's something we call sulcus enterocos. That's the gastric juice. It produces enterokinase that will not convert that inactive trypsinogen to trypsin. Yes, that is during digestion. So you can see, I wrote lipase, amylase, trypsinogen. So the two of them, odikini, lats. That's the um, acronym we use for it, for the exocrine function of the pancreas. Are you with me, please, class? Is there any problem? Classy, any problem? I cannot hear anybody. No, eh? No, are you sure? Yes, sir. Are you sure this big, big grandma is not shaking the head? Hope it's not shaking your head. Yeah, I'll handle it like. Now, let's continue. Now, under the endocrine gland, you know, I told you that one is to produce what? Hormones. It's to produce what? Hormones. So, we have what? Two, uh, two cells you are looking at majorly. We have the alpha cells and the beta cells. We have the alpha cells and the beta cells. Beta cells. That is under the function of the pancreas. So, the alpha cells produce this glucagon. Alpha cells produces glucagon. Why the beta cells produces insulin? Produces insulin. Alpha cells produces glucagon. Beta cells produces insulin. And these two are being produced by the what? Isolates of Langerhans. So it is what produces what? Glucagon and insulin. So how do they function? Are we there? When you have eaten a lot, we have excess blood sugar. We call that a condition hyperglycemia. When somebody has excess what sugar in the blood, hyperglycemia, excess blood sugar, excess blood sugar. So who can tell me what would the opposite be? If there is, if you see somebody that is very hungry, like or oh, there is no excess blood sugar, there is no um, there is sorry, there is a reduced amount of blood sugar in the blood. What would we call that? Plus, if I call excess blood sugar hyperglycemia, it's very good from sister fever. So it's called what? Hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia. That is why you see some people in the medical field, when they are hungry, they don't say I'm hungry. They don't say, I'm, I, I think I'm hypoglycemic. I think I'm hypoglycemic. That means what? The person needs food immediately. So how do this function occur? When there's excess blood sugar, the body uses insulin. It produces insulin. So that insulin can convert it to glycogen which is the stored form of glucose that has to be stored in the liver. Are we there? So now, whenever you now go on exercises, maybe strenuous exercises, some of you went to jog, you know, during COVID-19, now they've been saying it, oh yeah, keep fit, don't just stay at home, exercise well, do this and that. 
So while you are jogging or people are fasting, some Muslims are fasting, some Christians are fasting, and some Muslims just need their fast. Do you understand? So during that period, you'll be wondering that when you are fasting, you still see people, they are able to walk and everything. It's because what? The excess glycogen that has been stored is now being converted back to what? The blood sugar. And this is done by an, uh, by an hormone called what? The glucagon. Are we there? The glucagon converts what? The glycogen that has been stored into what? Into glucose when it is needed. During strenuous exercises or during what? Or during fasting. So that is what occurs. So you can write this down. During starvation or strenuous exercises, glucagon is released to convert what? Stored glycogen to glucose. Are we there? So that is what happens. So and when there is, that's why I said when there's excess sugar in the blood and there is what? Not enough insulin to convert it into glycogen, what happens? Diabetes mellitus results. Diabetes mellitus results. So now let's quickly talk about the disease of the liver. Disease of the liver. So um, some of the diseases of the liver is that we have disease of the liver. That is what I want to talk about now, of the liver. So some of the diseases of the liver we have is hepatitis. So whenever you hear hepatitis, anything T's, T's, dermatitis, it's this inflammation of something. Whenever you hear any word ending with TIS in biology, it means what? Inflammation of something. So hepatitis simply means what? Inflammation of the liver. Inflammation of the liver. Simply means inflammation of the liver. After that, we have jaundice. So this one you see it in sickle cell patients majorly. Yes, when you see the eye, is very, the eye is, being, yeah, is very yellow or very colored. Jaundice. Yes. So I'm coming. I'm coming. I will write everything. People have read a lot. I love that. Um, and the word of Gaston, uncle. I'm um, sorry. She didn't say uncle. Just say word of Gaston. Yes, I know, man. I will include that. Yes, you are correct. Gaston is there. We have liver cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis. Some of them, you have to read up on them because you don't have all the... Then liver abscess. Liver abscess. Liver abscess. So let me say something. So just like what I said, that any disease that ends with TIS is an inflammatory disease. And thank God, um, someone had helped us in gallstone. That's why I'm not typing out gallstone again. Yes, you are right, man. Gallstone is one of them. Now let's start. Hepatitis can be caused by the virus, hepatitis virus. Take note. Can be caused by the virus, hepatitis virus. Now, which are hepatitis virus A, hepatitis virus B, and hepatitis virus C? No, it's not the colorization of the tummy. No, no, no. They are coming here. No, when you say somebody is jaundiced, no. No, it's not the colorization of the tummy. No, I'm coming there. No, we have hepatitis virus. So we have hepatitis virus A, B, or C. So that's why you see some people, they tell you they have hepatitis A. That means it's caused by virus A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Now, it can be contracted by eating contaminated food materials and also having multiple sexual partners. Yes, those that love Jewish, you know. Yes, and um, also it can be contracted by what? For, um, eating what? Contaminated food. Now, jaundice is the inability of the liver to break down bilirubin. Yes. Inability of the liver to break down bilirubin is also jaundice. So, in babies, they don't have a well-developed liver. So, that's why for those that have those issues, like a baby that was giving birth to prematurely. That's the that even um, your sickle cell patients or babies. Are we there now? In babies that don't have um, a well-developed liver. So we use light. light. So light helps the babies to photochemically break down bilirubin. Break down bilirubin. Well, why, why, why is this so? Why must bilirubin be broken down in the liver? Are we there? Why is this so? It's just that the breakdown of bilirubin helps us to color the physics and your urine. Are you, are you there now? Bilirubin will help us to color what? Your physics and your urine. That is the breakdown. Why? Because under the breakdown of bilirubin, it's broken down into two substances. You have the stacobilin and the urobilin. This is the spelling. Bilirubin. So we now have, bilirubin is now broken down into two. We have the stacobilin. When it's broken down, stacobilin and what? Urobilin. Are we there? Stacobilin follows the physics. Urobilin follows the what urine. That's why when you see what's the color of the urine class, amber color. It must always be like that. Although it's not in all conditions. You understand? Yes, some people will still look like pale white, but normally it should be amber. And then we now have um, sorry, I don't know. You will believe um, I'm unable to send. Yes, yeah, so uh, I can't why? 
I'm unable to send. Let me let me try again, please. So Stacobilin follows the physics. Why you go believe? Stacobilin follows the physics. Why you go believe follows the what? It follows your urine. So that's due to the help of what? Bilirubin. When a bit of the bilirubin to break down into these forms causes what? Jaundice. That's why I, would, I, would always, I always know them is just that. You see that their eyes is always very yellow. Yes, looking very yellow. So you see, ah, is this person done this? There's a word we use, yes. When the person is not done, they say, not an etheric. Yes, is a word we use in the clinic. So is this person done this? Now let me quickly move fast because we don't have all day. Now we have liver cirrhosis and liver abscess. They are caused by toxins or poisonous substances in the liver. Yes, they cause liver um, cirrhosis and liver abscess. Now they can also be cancer of the liver. Chemicals or poisons and radiation can cause cancer of the liver. They will now have gallstone, which Umwani was talking about the other time. Gallstone is caused as a result of the obstruction to the flow of bile in the bile duct. Yes. So that's what causes gallstone. But that's what leads to gallstone. When there's um, obstruction to the flow of bile in the bile duct, then gallstone is the um, result. This gallstone result. So with this, I'm true with the liver, ladies and gentlemen. So I only did this. Like is um how will I put this? It's a class that I just had to just um summarize. It is wider than this piece. Yes, but if I'm to take everything, we don't have all day, that's why. So immediately I move or quickly I move to the endocrine glands. I move to the endocrine glands. So what are your endocrine glands? They produce your hormones. They produce your hormones, they are also called ductless glands. That is, they don't have a ductal passage. That's what I mean by ductless. Ductless. That is, they don't have a duct. Have a duct or passage. And that's why when you see the action, you are always shocked that how do they act like this? You wonder when you look at some men's chest, some men they have breasts, some they don't have. It's due to the production of the endocrine gland. Same thing with your ladies. It's because they don't have ducts. So they just they just send down their words. They are enzyme, um, sorry, they just send out the hormones um, from where they are being originated into the bloodstream. So if the blood does not carry the hormone to where it's meant to go to. So for example, if the receptor is in the is in the what is in the breast of a lady, it will accept it. So that is why you see, because they are being poured into the bloodstream, you see that when the mammary gland of a lady develops, let me use it that way. You see that it varies. Why? It's because they don't have a duct. They just pour their what? Their what? Um, their enzymes into the bloodstream. So they don't have a duct. That's why I call them ductless glands. Almost. So they produce hormones. They also call ductless glands. They don't have a duct or passage. So now let's go. This, they, these hormones are all shared into the bloodstream. And they carry to their target organs. Hormones can go and act on organs far away from where they are produced. Yes, that's how they do. They can go and act on organs that are far away from where they are produced. Hormonal responses are slow. Please take note. Like growth hormones, for example. And also, it can be very rapid or fast in the action of what? Adrenaline effects. Adrenaline effects. Adrenaline effects. Yes, it is fast. So it can be slow or rapid and can be fast. But that of the nervous system. Are you there now? The nervous system is always very fast. So please take note. The first assignment. Um, in the next class, I want you to know five differences between the endocrine glands and the nervous system and nervous coordination. Are we there, everybody? Are we all paying attention to me? Class. Yes, Class. Sir. Okay, very good. Yes, so, what is the assignment? What is the assignment? The assignment is what? Different five differences. Five glands and the what? Nervous system. Very good. Now, very good. Now, uh, the next question is Are we listening? Now, another name for adrenaline is called what? Oh, yeah, fastest finger. Fastest finger. Fastest finger. Another name for adrenaline is called what? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, sharp, sharp. The class is almost ending. Fastest finger. Everyone. Another name for adrenaline is called what? Emergency or more? Ah, okay, I'll collect it like that from Boda. No, um, from Sister Awa. Yes, from Sister Awa, but no, I don't want emergency or more. Don't give me emergency, please. But you tried. Emergency glass. Ah, why are we using the word emergency? 
Ah, right, right, right. Actually, another name for adrenaline is called epinephrine. Epinephrine. Take notes. So that's why you watch some movies, like some American movies that are talking about, that talking about medicine. But now, even though you want to involve yourself in any movie, please, you should watch those ones that we actually have to you. Yeah, so like, that we actually make you see a dream in what you want to do. As well, to do. So like epinephrine, yeah. also known as adrenaline. So, take note. And there's some other hormones. But now, the master gland, I spelt it. I spelt it. The master gland, epinephrine. The master gland is called um, the pituitary gland. Please take note. The pituitary gland. The other the pituitary gland, we'll be talking about some several other glands. We have the parathyroid gland. We have the thyroid gland. We have the, we have the, um, the adrenal gland. Although for this level, we don't call it adrenal gland again. We call it suprarenal gland. Why? Because the renal gland, whenever you hear anything renal, it's talking about the kidney. And now the adrenal glands that are being shaped, they are found on top of the kidney. So instead of calling the adrenal gland now, we call it suprarenal gland. You see the pancreas, we talk about the testes, ovary too, and the hormones that affect them and how they function. Yes, inshallah, Rafan. So we talk about them and all. So the first one we'll be looking at is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland, for example. So um, I will just quickly say something brief about the pituitary gland and how you can know those hormones that are being produced by the pituitary gland. Then the next class we continue. Inshallah, Rafan. Please pardon me. I didn't go really um, very far today. Please. I'm very sorry. Just accept it the way it is, please. I'm very sorry, please. Now let's go to tissue gland. It's found in the hypothalamus of the brain. Yes. So the hypothalamus of the brain, or where the pituitary gland sits, don't go in the hypothalamus of the brain. It's called the position called the cella toxica. Yes, cella toxica. That's anatomy majorly. You don't need it. Yes, very good. Someone has helped me type out the assignment. Very good. May Allah reward you all abundantly. So now it's found in the hypothalamus of the brain. It's also called the master gland. That's the pituitary gland. The tree, the tree, gland. Some people call it that way. So it's found that hypothalamus of the brain, and it's also called the master gland of the body. It's called the master gland because its hormones control the production of hormones of other glands. You can see now why do you call it the master gland because its own hormones controls the what production of hormones of other glands. Now take note: hormones of the pituitary glands are of two kinds. So we have the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. Yes. So and their names we call them, but please. Since we are no medical students yet, don't let me be scaring you with those medical words. Eh? Oh, Jamie, so don't let us be using them. So we have the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland includes what? Somatotropin, also known as growth hormone. Please let's be right to know. Somatotropin. Somatotropin. Or what? Growth hormone. Hormone. The next one is now what? Gonadotropin or gonad stimulating hormone. Gonado, gonadotropin, gonadotropin or what? Gonad stimulating hormone. And what are the gonads? They are the what? They are the sex organs. Mm -hmm. or gonad stimulating hormone. Let's pay attention. After that, we have prolactin. Prolactin are uh, also known as what? Or what? Or lactotropin. Please mm -hmm. always take note of each thing. Prolactin or lactotropin. Mm -hmm. After that, we have thyrotropin. Mm -hmm. Thyrotropin. These are the hormones that are produced by the what? And mm -hmm. the Who is that one? Who is singing? Or thyroid what? Stimulating hormone. Thyrotropin or thyroid stimulating hormone. After that, we have luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone. Hormone. Although some people may not make mention of this, but isn't it? Elite. Then we have what? Corticotropin. Corticotropin. So these are many. One, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think it's a. Um, there's a word we use um, TT and Gloria. That is thyrotropin and gonadotropin. TT and Gloria likes. Singing and playing, likes luteinizing hormone. Singing, somatotropin, playing prolactin, and I've forgotten the one for corticotropin. Please take note, please. So now we talk about the next one, which is what the posterior pituitary hormones. So for the posterior pituitary hormone, for the posterior pituitary, that one produces only two hormones. 
oh, 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 okay, what I'm typing is not good. Oh, please, I did not know. I went to, I didn't put it at everyone. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lie, lie, la, la. Please, I'm sorry. Moshe, I just saw it now. Thank you. The chichi gland, eh? So my to go to moon. Please. Everybody receive it now. Please, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, please. I did not know. My hand already changed it. Please, I'm very sorry, please. Yes, I will send them now. Please, I'm sorry. Please pardon me. Let them be. It's nice in your mood. Then cortical chopping. Can we all see it now? Everybody, can we all see it? Oh, yeah, answer me, please. Can we all see it now? Everyone, can we all see it? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. I'm very sorry, please. Other ones, people have been able to see them. Epinephrine, I said, Anani for adrenaline. Can we see them? Can we see it? Sorry. I've sent it again. Please, epinephrine is not part of it. Eh? Very good. I've sent it again. There are still some other ones I've typed. Ah, I've typed a lot. Oh. Stack of billing, you will believe for you. Um, can we get those ones? Or should I send them back? Should I send them back? Eh? Class, should I send them back? Or we can get them. The ones I've typed before. All those other you believe will be in your stack will believe you will believe. I should send them back. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll be fast. So Billy Rubin. So you have your stack of billing. That one colors what? Stack of billing colors physics. You will believe colors what? You will win. Please take notes. Then I said ductless means what? They don't have a doctor or what? Or passive. You understand? They don't have a doctor or passive. Please take notes. I'm sorry, please. Please, I'm sorry, everybody. Please, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. So I said the ammunition. Yes, take notes for the liver. Then I typed about the fat soluble vitamins. I said it's called ADEC. That's fat soluble vitamins. It's called ADEC. So you have your vitamin A. It's called what? Let's know. Vitamin D is called what? Calciferol. Vitamin E is called what? Egosterol or tocopherol. And vitamin K is called what? Phylloquinone. Please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Elder cells, spin, yes. So I talked about where the, um, what produces the two cells of the pancreas, which is the, this is not a it's called the isolate of Langerhans. After that, I spoke about the pancreas being kind of to function, which is what? Exocrine and endocrine. So endocrine glands. So I said the, um, the acronym is called LAT. And after that, the endocrine glands, you have the alpha cell and the beta cell. So I said alpha cells for disease, look at Beta cells for disease, I'm sorry, please. After that, I told you I paglycemia simply means what excess blood sugar. Yes. Are we okay with all this class? Everyone, are we all okay with this? Can I move on now? I'm waiting for your reply. Can I move on? Okay, very good. Let me quickly talk about the posterior pituitary gland and then we end the class for today. So, because I've been saying a lot of things, so I don't want everybody said to be taken. And it's not as if they are interesting things. Posterior pituitary gland. So it produces just two hormones. We have the ADH, which is called the what? Anti, anti diuretic hormone. Anti diuretic what? Anti diuretic hormone, which is also known as what? Or is also known as vasopressin. So when this hormone actually misbehaves in a younger person, it's what causes diabetes, what? Insipidus. Please take note. Yeah, so you see them, they drink water a lot. And they eliminate a lot. Then we have the other one, which is oxytocin or pictocin. So the um, posterior pituitary gland produces just two hormones ADH, also known as vasopressin, anti diuretic hormone, and we have oxytocin or pictocin. So please, that is where we'll be drawing the curtain for today. Please, I hope you all enjoyed today's class. Please, pardon me. Eh? Please, I'm just um, trying my only two way. Please. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry for not typing very early. I did not know.
So are we okay with all this class? Yes, Everyone, sir. I'm asking. Eh? So that yes, will be the ending of the class for today. Yes, so thank you very much. Thanks for the audience. I'm very grateful. Yes, so I'm very sorry for this. Hmm? So if there's any question, you can keep them for me till next class. I would appreciate them. Do you understand? Even though if it's not just on, um, even though it's not just on um, homeostasis, you can bring them from any angle. And the person that I requested for a slide on Melsis and Michaels, please, I'm very sorry. It's just that the laptop I have with me is not really functioning well. Yes, but I'm working on another one. So you can also pray. Let me pray to get a better one, please. So inshallah. I will try to do this. I'm very sorry, everyone. Thank you very much for today's class. Yes, I'm very grateful. So I'll be leaving the class for today. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.